Hello and welcome to the live printing impressions webinar using RollFed Finishing to produce meaningful and targeted marketing campaigns sponsored by MBO America. I'm Patrick Henry, Senior Editor for NAPCO Media's Printing and Packaging Group and the moderator of today's program. Before we get started, let me take a moment to point out the Tips for Attendees widget on your console. It's the blue one with the wrench on it. If you missed the Tech Tips video we played leading up to the webinar, you can always click this widget for more information. And please be sure to use the Q&A button in the bar on the bottom to send us your questions at any point during the webinar. Our guest speakers today are print marketing specialists from Intellis, a fully integrated marketing organization based in Montgomeryville, Pennsylvania. Uh, with us are MJ Ortiz, Vice President of Operations, Tony Werner, Director of Business Development, and Ryan Newell, Digital Print Manager. Also speaking is Lance Martin, Vice President of National Accounts and Marketing, MBO America. I'm now going to turn the program over to Lance, who will pass it on to our three speakers after he has made some opening remarks. I'll come back when our speakers are done to present the questions from the audience. And remember, please, at any point during the program, use the Q&A button on your console to submit your queries for the Q&A uh, session. Lance, uh, please go ahead. Thanks, Pat. I appreciate it. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, we really love doing these uh, webinars with with the print industry. We have we have some great customers, and today you're going to hear a really great story. Uh, I'm going to go over um, a rather short intro on just a few, a little bit about MBO America, uh, and a little bit about what uh, system you're prob you're going to um, uh, have a presentation on today from our customer. Uh, I think the first thing I'd like to go over is to dispel a few rumors and talk a little bit about MBO of America's uh, path forward. Uh, our old model, we used to be well known just for the offset business and folder market, and most people associated the name MBO with folders, and most of that was for the B1 market. Uh, offset folding was was paramount. And of course, that is our core business. We still do that and we still believe we are the best at it. Uh, however, our new model has really turned into more of an end-to-end -end solution and it involves also roll-fed finishing along with the sheet-fed finishing. And it's not just limited to the offset market, of course. It's, uh, it, it's, it's moved into the digital world. Uh, so web-fed, continuous forms, uh, inkjet presses, and cut sheet digital is is all within our uh, our purview. Uh, we we believe we are now a world class provider of integrated systems for both sheet and roll fed finishing in the commercial print industry. And we provide value as as a as a supplier through modularity, uh, integration, using all the modules from the MBO business units. We have a lot of them. Uh, we have uh, business units that uh, make custom systems for specialty folding, direct mail market, uh, pharmaceutical. Of course, the MBO core business uh, builds folders for the offset market, which we use a lot of those components in our web fed solution. Uh, and that allows us to, to really provide a lot of flexibility. Uh, you have a scalable solution when you invest in an MBO system. And that really does preserve your investment. We, we're able to usually mold and, and modify the line uh, to fit the business model as you go forward. And, and as we all know, in this day and age with, in the digital world, things change uh, you know, at a very rapid pace. Uh, so it, we're also well known for the durability. Our business model of having a durable unit uh, and high performance moved on into the, the, this digital world where we are still a, um, a direct type of a maintenance situation for a commercial print operation. Uh, we don't uh, have the, the typical transactional type of model for maintenance and service where we have a person in the building a lot. Uh, we are more of a preventative maintenance, uh, assistance help during uh, service calls, 
and and so on. And a lot of self maintenance goes on in our industry, and we we perform very well in that market. Uh, we're noted for the high performance and productivity, for expanding the cap- capability, and uh, mostly today the projects that we work on are all about consolidating functions to remove steps and get it down to go from either a roll or a sheet directly to the finished product. The multi-step process is certainly not advantageous in this world. This is a little snapshot of MDO America, and I think this will surprise a lot of people. Uh, We are now being about 50% of our business is in the, uh, di- we call it digital finishing. It, it's mostly in the web, continuous forms, uh, finishing, inkjet. Uh, we, we say digital, but it's not necessarily all digital. I mean, a lot of this comes from shell business and offset. Uh, and you're going to see today where that was actually part of the transformation here was moving from a shell model of offset web with um, variable data over the top of it to now a, a white paper digital web uh, digital inkjet workflow, and that's that's something we've really excelled at in our business. We're putting out 15, 18, sometimes even 20 lines a year uh, now going out uh, into that market. Uh, we still have a solid, uh, large commercial folding base in that B1 offset market. You can see the piece of the pie is about 25 percent. Uh, but you can see that between those two core businesses now, that makes up 75% roughly of our of our market. Uh, and then we've added also the specialty pharma, which is growing right now, and also die cutting, which is uh, for the B2 market uh, is where we play, and that that's certainly growing also. This is uh, the four uh, pedestals of our business. We provide uh, after mark after the sales service uh, for for nearly everything to keep your machine running. Uh, We have parts inventory uh, located in the Philadelphia area, which is Marlton, New Jersey, just outside of Philly. Uh, Our service technicians are located around the country. Uh, They do both installations and service. Uh, That's also breakdown uh, 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 emergency service along with scheduled performance maintenance plans, which you see that's a pillar in the lower corner. Uh, we have developed that plan in the last um, two years uh, to go along with keeping the highest level of productivity in the building as possible. Today, we're going to talk about some standard solutions a little bit. And to the, the first one we're going to see today is our direct mail and letter fold finishing system, which Intellis put in just recently. Um, we're going to focus in on that. That is the core of our finishing model in the, in the United States. Uh, those systems can also morph into uh, specialty systems that add on things for self-mailers and heavy stock and plow folding, both cut sheet plow folding and web plow folding, you'll see. Uh, we have a cut and stack solutions for postcards and flat sheets along with signature book blocks, and that signature and book block system can morph into the stitching Uh, world also. And then we have some specialty units which go to any line that we um, have the dynamic soft anvil dynamic perf and score units. And uh, we have some new things coming out uh, still this year uh, to offer into that market, things such as coders for the web. So we're going to concentrate today on uh, the direct mail side of the business. And this is what this looks like. So it starts with an unwinder, goes through to the delivery, Um, You put a roll in and a finished letter comes out the other end ready to be put into the mail tray or stacked on a skid or a box or or whatever uh, material handling method there is. The speed of these lines can run up to 824 feet a minute with the most common speeds running between 5 and 700 and I think you'll see some video on that today. Um, And uniquely we're able to cut from 4 inches out to 80 inches which gives our folding capability a very, very rare uh, capability in the market. Uh, we're not stuck into that eight and a half by eleven format at all. Uh, we can branch out and and make all kinds of folds to give your finishing what it needs to get that attraction you need in that direct mail market. It's all about getting that letter opened, and we're, we'll try to give uh, give you the uh, ability to make a really good piece that stands out in the market. So. Uh, today, we have representatives from Intellis, it's a new, uh, one of our newest installations, uh, 
and I think it's going to be a great show. They've got three people on board. I'm going to introduce now MJ Ortiz. He's the Vice President of Operations at Intellis, and uh, we'll get us started going through the whole company, and then we'll uh, talk about specific solutions and some video and some questions and answers. So, MJ? Thanks so much. Uh, I just want to welcome everybody and thank you all for being on today. Uh, I have the pleasure of talking a little bit about my company uh, that I work for in Tetlis Marketing. So I'll tell you a little bit about us and, you know, kind of how we came to be in the market, and then I'll pass it on uh, through our Director of Business Development and our Digital Print Manager to get a little bit more into the nitty-gritty of this. So, um, uh Roughly three or so years ago, our ownership group, Manny Ortiz and uh, Mike Herman, uh, both retired with over close to 75 years of experience between the two of them in the uh, print, digital print, and direct mail industry. Both retired, kind of decided, hey, um, you know, we've got a lot left and we want to come back and do this. So I asked them, uh, I had the courtesy of asking them why they did it, and their answer was because they could. So uh, the two of them decided that they wanted to get back into it um, and wanted to do it pretty fast uh, and not go through the traditional uh, growth that a normal company would take. So our initial approach was growth through acquisition, which is how we came upon our print center that you'll see uh, on Yerkes Road in King of Prussia. Um, that was uh, originally uh, IBS, if anybody was familiar with them. They were a large format roll-to-roll -roll um, offset printing facility. Um, shortly thereafter, we acquired our corporate drive, uh, which is now, or I'm sorry, Commerce Drive, which is now our fulfillment and packaging center, which had um, a fulfillment and a small direct mail footprint um, and with some digital capability as well. Um, and we quickly realized that in order to kind of meet our customers' needs, we would need to grow a lot more in the digital and direct mail arena. So that's why we uh, branched out and got our third location, which is our high-speed roll-to-roll digital, uh, inkjet digital, uh, which is also where you'll find all of our high-speed MBO equipment right down the road from our fulfillment packaging center. Um, when uh, the ownership group got together, their whole backing or premise was, let's make sure that the equipment that we bring in is not just what would be considered top of the line, which is why we're here today with MBO, but also the equipment that is going to meet the needs for us in 2020, but then going into the next you know, three to five years. They had lived the ups and downs of the print industry, um, and knowing where uh, we believe the industry is going with highly targeted direct mail pieces in the digital arena and being able to finish and do all the high-end uh, applications necessary is how uh, we got together with Canon to get our ink, digital inkjet and MBO to be able to do our finishing for our direct mail. Um, so from there, I'm going to go ahead and pass this on to Tony, who again is our Director of Business uh, Development, and she'll tell you a little bit about um, us and what we do. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Uh, so a little bit more about Intellis and why Intellis, and just the vision of the company as well as we entered the market to become a direct response partner that was really a one-stop shop for everybody. Um, as MJ mentioned the owners invested in the latest technology and equipment, and I'll also say in talent in the building. Um, in addition, in our King of Prussia plant, we are um, one of the highest capacity printers for our inline finishes. So all those amazing holograms and metallic envelopes and texture envelopes that you're seeing in your mailbox that make everybody, as we know from our customers, have a better open rate, we're producing all of those for um, most of the large envelope manufacturers. Um, we definitely pride ourselves on exceptional service um, with a lot of various certifications, including the latest one, um, which is our ISO certification for security. Obviously, we handle a lot of data and programming uh, in the building. As far as our services, um, we um, have print, data processing, personalization, letter shop, envelope converting, 
coastal optimization, logistics, and fulfillment. Um, in the fulfillment arena, we do print on demand, pick and pack, and packaging. And we also uh, handle, since we are in the POD market, a lot of e-commerce e site builds and as actually host and maintain many sites. Under that print umbrella, again, is our digital print, our commercial print, and of course, with the finishing in the letter shop is what we're here to talk about today, which is the MBO, and we'll talk a little bit more about why we invested in that equipment as we were purchasing the front-end printing equipment. <clears throat> today, we're seeing the market a lot different than we saw it in the past. You know, some of our customers still do print conventionally, um, but the reason for printing in a digital environment gives a lot of benefits to our customers. And I just wanted to go over a few today. So today, conventionally, people are using the, you know, print static shells. We've seen our customers go from that to printing full white paper, just white paper in and completely customized two sides out. This gives our customers the opportunity to variable, that have variable front and back and in full color. So if you can imagine, there's no more stored inventory. Um, there's no need to discard outdated material because we're actually printing on the fly. There's no reprint of forms errors. Um, there's no need for pre-printed artwork to be changed. And um, there's no need for limited customization on the back or cost for printing multiple versions. So basically, in the digital environment, we're seeing, you know, one step in the process. We put the white paper in, we do major variable data, and we encourage our customers, if you have a lot of data, use it, because it's, this is the environment you want to use. We have gotten a lot of response from our digital customers that the response rates have increased because they're speaking more now to the individual. We're in the print static shell environment. They were talking more to buckets of people. Um, so in this, we're also able to target full color messages on the fly. Um, we've all been through COVID-19. We had a customer that needed to change because their facilities were closed. They didn't have to worry about trashing forms. They were able to go right up, and we could change the variable on the fly. Um, we've also been able to help the school systems that were not able to um, provide Chromebooks, and we were able to digitally print variable on the fly for their students. So it's just a great opportunity to be able to take your data, evaluate it, figure out how you want to use it, and customize it on the fly without any pre-printing involved. So again, I'll just review a little bit why digital and why customers are moving this way. And as we talked today about the MBO, when we decided to go into the digital market, it's very important that we were able to take our digital pro streams and color stream and our I-300 and marry that with the great finishing equipment we're going to talk about later. But the idea of digital is to have one-to-one -one contact with customers and really create meaningful connections, um, design impactful headlines, targeted messages, which we know have been proven to lift response. Um, instead of using variable template uses, separate mailings are now one. So if you can imagine you had many different versions, we can now version on the fly and adds to, we can advance customize everything and we don't have to have multiple lots going through and running through the letter shop. So now we're able to combine as much as possible because most of our customers are using one envelope uh, to ensure that their message is shown through the envelope and then we don't have to actually break them out for the USPS in lots. So that's actually another efficiency and time saving and money saving opportunity. And the best thing that digital does is extends the connection. You're using big art and small touches, and you can choose your artwork from a housed digital asset library. If you can imagine, as we're housing all of this data from our customers, now they have the opportunity, everything's housed in one environment, and we pull in their images, we pull in their logos, we pull in their variables as they call for it from their marketing instructions. So we've really seen an influx in this digital world, and um, that's really the reason why we connected with MBO to handle the finishing and the back end. Yeah, and so really our, our main goal was to be able to hit that multi-channel marketing, or as they're calling it now, omni-channel approach. And what we wanted to do with our digital equipment 
was be able to take the same premise of what you would see in today's digital online marketing, which is a targeted response directly to the customer and convert it to the print and direct mail stream. And that's what we've worked on. So beyond just your direct mail, we work with the email campaigns, we work with your e-commerce site using pearls, landing pages, we could give you, um, you know, back-end dashboards, um, and all different types of, you know, print-on-demand that, that's targeted. But our real high-level approach is to take our high-end finishes that we can out of our offset facility to produce a really high-end, uh, awesome outer envelope that you're going to want to open because it's got foil, it's got grit, it's got texture, it's got something that makes somebody want to open it, and then hit them with a targeted piece inside that speaks to the customer with whatever level of data that you have beyond just name, address, and is it someone's birthday. With the digital equipment that we have in here matched with the finishing that we can do to, to ensure um, you know, multiple matches within one, being able to write on cards and do, you know, beyond your traditional, uh, you know, eight and a half by 11 fold into a number 10. That's really where we found ourselves. So that's a lot about Intellis uh, uh, from a high level and, and what we look to accomplish. We're going to pass this over to Ryan uh, Newell, who is our digital print manager and does a lot more here. Um, but he really uh, has a grasp on our equipment and what we do in our day-to-day -to, -day to have our customers be successful. So he's going to take it from here. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, so let's start with our print capabilities, our digital print. We have the OSA Canon Color Stream, the Pro Stream, the i300, and the Image Press 8000. The Image Press 8000 is a toner-based box. We use that for our, some of our fulfillment POD jobs. Also, we have the Inkjet i300, which is a sheet fed box, and then the two roll to roll systems, the Color Stream and the Pro Stream. After that, we have the MCS card affix machines, which we can affix to a carrier and actually print on the card as well, or do a match embossing to the carrier. From there, we have the, you know, CMC producers, Bluecrest rivals, and the Bluecrest Flowmasters. But in between all that, we have multiple MBO pieces of equipment for finishing. We can do multiple different fold patterns. Um, it gets pretty pretty complicated, some of the folds we've had to do so far. And, you know, that's why we chose MBO. So before, we had the slower speed, the Bowie, the Speedo, cutters, Slitters, folders. Um, it went, you know, your normal speeds. But then when we upgraded to the uh, MBO high speed equipment, we basically replaced two of the Bowie systems immediately and cut down our uh, labor force and our turn times for mail pieces pretty quickly. MBO, yeah, so before we had a seven day a week, three shift operation when we were just running the older equipment. Now we take that same volume, we get it done in three days and two shifts of operations. Obviously productivity increase, less waste. Um, the MBO equipment is all, you know, the edge trim and the gutter trimming in line, the turn time reductions. So this is just our video before and after. You can see the speed differences here, and it just it, it flies. What's the current speed versus the 100 feet per minute to the 400 and 500 feet per minute? And you'll see that, and that's about 500 feet a minute right there. And there you see the the improvements we've made by going with MBO, the high-speed equipment, the replacement, the increase in 
throughput. Yeah, and just to reference, um, basically one of the reasons why we went to, M to MBO is um, Intellis really understands today's market. Um, we have changed to digital direct mail, allowing customers to target message messages in full color, front and back, on the fly. We made the investment in MBO equipment because it was the best choice for us to continue to gain efficiencies through the finishing process in the plant. So again, once we made the decision to go with the digital equipment, we then had to marry that with something that had just as much efficiency um, as our digital to keep up. I mean, obviously, we're anybody familiar with direct mail, we're all up against the schedule. We're all trying to make the schedule. Clients are constantly asking for more capacity a week. So this is why we decided to go with MDL. And it's it's a major increase. I mean, to to try to put it um, in, in the best way to quantify it for everybody to understand, what we were doing before in roughly an eight-hour shift, we now do in roughly an hour and a half to two hours. So think about that. In one shift, we're almost gaining four times the amount of productivity. Um, there just wasn't another solution out there that could offer that kind of increase. Um, that also just marries really well with our current uh, print provider, uh, which is Canon, for the majority of what we do. So, you know, it was a, it was a pretty straightforward, it was a no-brainer. We had a very long history with MBO and their folding equipment. Um, we know that, you know, parts, service, they're all there to support you. Um, but, you know, it, it was it was a pretty one-sided, uh, you know, process. We, we knew we were going to go with MBO from when we uh, got in there. So I'm going to go ahead um, and just pass this if one. Uh, this if is I just could. a little bit. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, MJ. I, uh, if we could go back that one one screen, I would take just a second to give a, a rather general comment about about some of the projects we see in the market today. A lot of times, our our audience is making a lot of the same considerations. Um, we see uh, a similar project quite a bit. Um, the the chop cutter idea where people were taking either shells or they were uh, and putting variable data on them through a toner box or something similar to that, uh, regardless of how that process went, there was there was a very common method of loading a roll into a chop cutter and uh, and putting it through a single folder and and coming out the other end uh, as a letter and that 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 product was running somewhere in the order of 5,000 pieces an hour, 6,000 pieces an hour. Uh, and, and, and that's okay. Um, you know, 100 foot a minute is fine. Uh, but what it required everybody to do to keep up with the turn time was to put in multiple lines. And I think that's what we see most of the time. We'll see three, four, five, six. Uh, we've, we've seen as much as, as 20 of them in a building. Uh, and the big issue with today's market is that means a person for every one of those lines. You have a lot of labor. Uh, the, you usually have a, a, I guess I'd call it a mismatch, where the the scaling economy runs with multiple chop lines to one press. Uh, and besides that whole toner box thing was causing a, you know, you had to run it through the sheet fed or for the offset first, and then run it through the toner box, which is relatively slow, and then you had. Uh, one, two, three, four lines running with a lot of people, and the whole turn time was rather was rather long. So we see this a lot. Um, the rule of thumb that we always use is a three to one, four to one type of an equipment replacement. It usually works out that way for the most part. Um, the systems uh, you know involved will do most any type of a letter fold format that we that we have in the market today, and and some crazy ones, uh, and you know the. And Telus does things that you know the the machine is capable of doing, and it's very creative. And they figure out ways to make it do some things that you know aren't aren't so widely known. Uh, and most everybody does that with the MBO equipment. Uh, you can arrange it, configure it, move pieces in and out. They can um, um, take pieces uh, in the future and add to it and make something rather robust. So it is a really good match. Uh, and then I wanted to make a comment just about the Canon solutions that are there too. Is we do find that as 
solutions that are providing the quality like the Canon ProStream are really pushing that commercial market. So we see ourselves uh, a lot more into that commercial market, working with customers that are doing this type of work, uh, especially when you get the quality of a press uh, like the ProStream, uh, printing on the types of stocks that we're used to and these high value added papers. Uh, it's beautiful work. It's not that transactional market that you know used to be around five, eight years ago. It's not. Uh, it, it, it's much more of a marketing market, and I think that's where our success uh, is really is really uh, going in this market today. Yeah, Thanks. I think you're Appreciate right about that. I mean, we're we're no longer just taking, you know, uh, an eight and a half by eleven white sixty pound paper with a trifold and going into an envelope. A lot of what we do with our ProStream and our ColorStream, especially the ProStream with the really high 1600 by 1600, 1200 by 1200 DPI, is high-end postcards and really marketing and advertising focused pieces, high color with, you know, with sharp finishing. So you need something that's going to keep up with that quality, not damage the paper because we're doing thicker stocks make a very clean, nice cut, and that's what Embryo brings to the market, so. Thanks for that, appreciate it. So this is just, a, that last slide just showed a few of our solutions, by the way, that we have uh, in-house. I don't know if you want to pop back to it before we hit the Q&A. But, Ryan, you want to explain what everything is here real quick so everybody gets an idea? So your top left slide there would be the unwinder into the sheeter, the high-speed sheeter. And then the bottom of that, it's just coming out of the sheeter, your mail piece. And then it'll, it's a little wonky here, but then your bottom right is from the sheeter into the folder to the delivery table, so your finished piece. So roll in. 400, 500 feet a minute, all the way through the sheeter, taking your chip outs, your chop cuts in between each form because of the uncommon top and bottom bleed. And that really ties in nicely with the digital equipment because you don't have your standard cutoffs anymore of 11, 17, 14, 28 inches. With digital, you can make it whatever size you want. And MBO, that sheeter line fits perfectly with that because you can save on waste, you can save on timing, your chip outs. You can make, you can make it whatever size you want. And that's what MBO, that sheet line really comes in handy with us for. And then also, that's where we would run our postcards. So that folder line would just slide out, and right in front of the sheeter, just you put a couple gutter cut trim knives in there, and then you just run roll through the sheeter, and it comes out, you know, three or four streams of finished postcards. So you're no longer having to put in slitter knives in your fold plates to actually separate your postcards. It's all done in the sheeter. So. And then we, we so right. don't have, but, but, sorry, but we do have on our wish list, because we do have an MBO wish list, uh, to bring in some other of the, your gluing systems. So beyond just your traditional postcard, we could do some fold over self mailers, which again, plays into that high end marketing um, you know, piece today, casino work, that kind of stuff. A lot of that is is now went to like a very high end self mailer, um, you know, beyond just your number ten, and that gets all done in the MBO line. So where before we'd have to touch it again after this to go and either inkjet it or tab it or glue it or do something offline or take it and insert it, um, we can literally come from roll right out through the MBO solution and glue or tab in line and have a, a, a finished direct mail piece that's like we said, a postcard or a self mailer that's ready to go right in the mail stream without any more touches. So, I, you know, to us, that, that's the win yeah. right there. So. so I think Ryan uh, hit on a couple of things that I'll expand on just a little bit. Um, in the photos here, you see some of the components and kind of the general configuration. And this, this really is kind of where we see most people start I will say these are typically the lines that go in first, uh, but they're all scalable. Uh, you can see how modular they really are. They're not connected like a box. You know, it doesn't look like a it doesn't look like a big long 
uh, box with a cover on it. Uh, it's actually modular pieces of equipment that get put together. You can see they're all standing alone, servo driven. They are connected electronically, uh, but in tension control, it's a tight web system and they're all connected through tension. Uh, so if they want to come back in and put in, say, the merging device, the slit and merge, uh, or the plow folder prior to the sheeter to get a you know four-page newsletters, or, or maybe they want to put in the dynamic score, score unit or perf unit, uh, that it's very easy to come in, take the unwinder, back it up a little bit, slide those pieces of equipment in, and uh, and run. And I'm and we really are talking about you know, a few hours or a day's worth of installation. It's not a, it's not a big project where you have to, you know, dismantle everything and start over again. Um, and then the, the same thing is even more true on the back end of that sheeter. Uh, what they were mentioning about the gluer and, and so on can even be expanded further. Uh, right after the sheeter, uh, I don't know if you can see it in the pictures, but the sheeter itself is actually mounted on feet. Uh, and it sits there. It's not meant to move. It's kind of like the it, that's the center point. That's the master part of the line. Uh, and the components after the sheet are plugged into it uh, and are driven by it and take their interface controls from it. Uh, you can see in that upper left picture the folder, and actually in the lower, lower right picture you see the folder and the delivery. And those are all choices that we can make at the time you want to put the line in, uh, and you can plan that for growth. Uh, anything coming after the sheeter can be um, changed out rolled in, rolled out. You heard Ryan mention that if he wants to run postcards, he pops the folder out, rolls that delivery up closer, and just has a stream of postcards. That's perfectly fine. Uh, you could literally have a different delivery on the back end that's fully automated to make banded bundles of letters, if that's your process. Uh, you could have two folders, three folders, uh, buckle folders on the back end of the sheeter. Uh, you don't need to have a buckle folder. You could literally put in a plow folder and that's what some people do for a lot of the self mailers running uh you know heavy stock if you're running seven eight nine ten point stock nowadays uh right off your ink jets uh that can go right in through the through the sheeting line and uh, we'll put in a sheet fed plow that can do all kinds of things and that's where the direct mail self mailer really takes off you know those systems are all capable of pick and place and uh gluing and perfing and uh, add-ons and tip-ons and all kinds of gadgets can go in there and that's when it really gets fun and and these lines you know we, we've had those conversations together and we're all set up to talk about doing that as as things grow and build uh, so uh, just a little comment there about how that expandability I mentioned earlier works uh, and it, it, it you know it's a complete platform from one end to the other thanks appreciate the time Okay, uh, thank you all for that uh, great overview. There are just a couple of points I wanted to clarify, but uh, before I get to those, I do want to remind our audience that we have uh, uh, plenty of time yet to get to your questions. I see one question in my Q&A box. Uh, I would like you to populate it with a few more questions uh, so that uh, we can uh, put them to our expert speakers here. Uh, I just wanted to return to the issue of uh, equipment replacement. Obviously, Intellis Marketing is getting a lot more work done in, uh, in, in many fewer hours. Uh, just uh, wondered uh, how much existing equipment uh, you were able to retire uh, when you brought uh, all of your Canon OSE and uh, MBO equipment in. How did uh, how'd that work out for you? Well, I, I wouldn't say that we retired any equipment. I'd say that we, we gave them uh, a little bit less of a workload or a little vacation uh, to be nice. Um, now, because of what we can do in our high-speed arena, the majority of our work um, is done there. And then any of the harder, more difficult setups are kind of set up and off to the side so we don't have to break it down and take it apart and lose, you know, two or three hours in a ship changing it over. So any difficult setups, we kind of leave pre-built off to the side so that when we need it, we can bring it over and run it without needing to break in and then lose a day of production between two ships turning over and coming back. But, you know, we, we've done as much as we can to, you know, really migrate everything that we can to the high speeds. But there just still are some of those old school slit nest, gatefold, 
um, applications, some people that are still just running traditional black. We still do have black toner based lasers here where we're still, you know, doing a shell and coming in and, and laying just black down on a form and then taking it over. So, um, they're not fully retired, but you know, they're, they're seeing a lot less, uh, time in the game. That's for sure. At, at this point, what percentage would you say of your of your volume is uh, is white paper in as opposed to overprint shell, uh, and and do you expect that percentage to to grow in in time? Um, see, right now, I'd say that it's something that's growing each year. Okay, I'd say we probably dance between forty sixty percent right now, all depending upon the month. Um, and, and, and what, you know, what campaigns are running. Obviously, uh, with COVID, we've all seen a, a, a greater reduce, uh, reduce workload. Um, but I would say as we go along here that we're going to see easily that increase between 5 to 10% each year for the next five years. And, and I think that as, as the technology, um, meets up with what we can do and more people start to rely on direct mail. I think direct mail is something that for many years people strayed away from with the, you know, the advent of email marketing and web-based marketing, but now knowing that all of your web and digital marketing campaign is going to, you know, get you less than a percentage point in most cases 0.8 uh, 0.08% return versus a you know some people argue four to six percent return on direct mail yes you're paying more to get in the mail stream which we can help you out with by commingling your mail or getting you some different postal discounts um but as as we could take that targeted piece and the fact that millennials are opening mail um people are still home especially now now during covid is the time that mail most people are um you know most people are shying away from it, but our customers that have really leaned into it at this point um, ha have seen a, a great response with direct mail because people are home and they are opening their mail and they're engaging. Um, so uh, th that's the best way I can answer it. I think right now it's just below half to maybe half or greater, but I, I think over the next couple of years it'll be a, a, a much greater utilization. Uh, we're starting to get some uh, questions from the webinar audience, so I'd like to jump right to those. And uh, here's a, a type of question that we get uh, all the time, almost uh, no matter what subject matter we're, we're, we're dealing with in these webinars. And this question uh, is, how did you adapt your new digital presses and the MBO finishing with your paper substrates? Any recommendations how to do this if I'm planning to invest in this equipment? And again, the uh, question is about how well your paper's working with all your equipment. And vice versa. Well, I mean, for us, it starts more up upstream. So it, it, the, the paper, MBO can pretty much handle what you're going to run through it. But for us, it's more on the printing side. So Canon has a list of approved media that we rely heavily on. Um, so a customer will come to us and give us, you know, a weight and, a, you know, a finish that they want to stay in. And then we can, you know, take a look at what's already been qualified to run. If it is a paper or a substrate that hasn't been qualified, working with Canon as a partner, they'll help us get it qualified. We can qualify our own paper in-house, but a lot of times it's better to have uh, Canon do it for us and then get us the correct settings to run on the printer. But so I would say it is more upstream. Work with, uh, you know, if you're going to work with Canon or any of the other uh, folks, they'll really let you know what substrates are going to be the best to run on. Because everything now, especially when you're dealing with inkjet digital, um, which is something we invested in because it's cheaper than toner, it, at this point, you've got to be a really high-end expert to tell the difference um, between inkjet and toner-based. Um, the substrate makes all the difference between hitting your colors and hitting your quality and not. So 
Um, it's a little bit more upstream, uh, but work with your uh, press provider, I would say, to help you there. And I just want to add, if there's anyone out there that's concerned about the current customer substrate that you're using and matching, you know, we've been through this when we've converted our conventional customers over to the substrates that you need to use for digital. I usually get a response that they actually like it better, um, and there are many, many comparable papers out there to what you're using conventionally. So don't be scared in any of that. There really is a, a vast majority of, op of, of options for our customers, and we found them to be very, very happy um, with the transfer to a different substrate. And if I could make one comment uh, also. Yeah, oh. please. Pa yeah, Patrick. Um, you know, we, we've we been very well versed over the years uh, coming out of our industry to have to deal with nearly any paper. And I think for the most yep, part, the, right. buckle, the buckle process in general is, is widely adapted to most any paper. Uh, the digital market ha and, and th those papers and the way the ink sets up on the paper has presented some challenges to everyone. Um, we've we've had to change mostly, I would say, one of the, uh, the scoring capability and the folding uh, method has had to adjust a little bit. Um, papers that are getting up and that are very heavy, like say six, seven, eight point, uh, we're starting to really recommend that you use the uh, cut sheet plow method after the sheeter, uh, and and we've got coating now where we can lay down both aqueous or UV coating on the on the sheet to give it some protection or some pop to help out uh, afterwards. And then uh, that soft anvil scoring unit was actually something we had to come up with uh, to better buckle folds uh, when we f the, the 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 digital digitally printed sheet the heavier that paper gets into this market uh, tends to crack uh, on the surface when it gets folded. And uh, that, that, that scoring device go, goes across the paper and scores prior to the fold. And it, it greatly reduces that, that cracking capability or that cracking problem. Uh, it just takes, it really opens up the capability. So it, it's kind of like the, the heavier, nicer, and more glossy coated those stocks get, the more trouble we found that customers were having and the more we've tried to come up with some solutions to, to help that out. So all the MBO tooling that you've had in the past on your, on all that, uh, you know, in the offset world is still available here to do, to do all that type of work in the, in the digital world too. Uh, for anyone at Intellis, uh, just wondered how modular is your MBO finishing equipment? Can you change its configuration to match uh, changing job requirements? Yes, and that's what Lance and I kind of touched on earlier today. That central point there with the sheeter unit, you can add scoring perfing units between the sheeter and the unwinder. So you can have your variable perfing, your variable scoring before it goes into the sheeter. And then after the sheeter, you can add your multiple buckle folders, your plow folders before or after the sheeter. Um, it's very versatile. Um, again, MJ mentioned we have a wish list, and we have a lot of things on that wish list. But yeah, you're just sliding they, pieces in and out all around that sheeting unit. But that's another one of the reasons that relates back to sorry to the the question you had earlier about retiring some of our older equipment. We try to run the majority that we can on the high speeds. So that when we do need to break into some of the some of the other setups, if we need to, we can run that offline. We do know it's going to run slower than we would on our high speed, but it allows us to keep up feeding the rest of the shop for inserting um, because we're going to put so much output on from that high speed that it gives you that versatility um, that we can you know either break in if we need to or utilize the other equipment that we have you know, to handle some of those other setups so we don't slow down anywhere. Okay. Here's a question about chip out, and it simply is, what is your typical chip out? Would that be a half an inch, and what's smallest versus largest? Okay, so our typical chip out is a one-half inch chip out. Um, you'll see with the roll-to-roll -roll digital presses, they, whether it's Canon or somebody else that we've seen, that I've seen so far, they like to print something called a refresh line or a flushing line between each sheet, each printed sheet. 
And that's typically, you know, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. And so we found just the half inch chip out really extracts correctly. It, you don't get any uh, waste building up through the uh, through the process, and it just extracts correctly through that sheeting unit. Um, I believe MBO specs, I think they say three sixteenths, but we really like three eighths to a half an inch. We try to keep it at a half an inch when we can. Uh, largest. I would, we don't like to take more than an inch, but I believe it goes up to an inch and a half. Am I correct, Lance? Yeah, actually, the range is quite large. It'll run down to about three sixteenths of an inch, and it'll go all the way out to three inches, actually. Okay. Um, and it's all programmable. But no, nope, I mean nobody really does that. There's really not much of a reason. There, there is a reason to do that in the when, if you're marrying webs together from the offset world and the and the digital world and you're running smaller sheets and you're trying to match up the old standard 22 and three quarter inch cutoff to something new, you may have wildly, you know, wildly sized chip outs to try to match up the sizes of the sheets. But um, other than that, we, we see things, what you just said, you know, it's an inch to, I think most people try to stay in that three eighths and above is what I see. Uh, I'm sure there's guys trying to push the envelope, but that's typically, I think what we see. Yeah, that's where we try to keep it. So. Uh, we've been speaking mostly about direct mail this afternoon, but here's a question about booklet work, and it's uh, how do you handle booklet work? Uh, are you printing 100% digital, or are you combining traditional uh, with uh, digital? We're, we're doing a little bit of both. Um, we do not – we have – we – are hopefully going to be bringing in um, our own booklet line this year. We were looking to do it earlier this year, but with COVID and everything, it kind of threw us off. Um, sure. But, you know, we are doing a little bit of both. So we will run, if we can, SIG pages off of our offset presses and then marry it in with digital or a digital um, cover. Uh, it, it all depends. Um, but the majority of what we do is, uh, truly a mix. So some offset, some digital, it's all going to come down to cost, paper type, number of pages, and it's, is there any variable in it? Because obviously um, sometimes burning so many plates, We, for instance, we had a client earlier this year that did um, over 30 different languages of one of her books. So, you know, the main versions we did in the offset world and then all of the different languages instead of having to burn different plates for each of the pages that were smaller quantities we went digital because it just was better suited so that's kind of the benefit of what we can do here for our customer which is give them a hybrid solution to to best suit their needs from a, a cost perspective and a quality perspective And a uh, question along the same lines about uh, postcards. Uh, you mentioned postcard production. What output rates do you get when sheeting uh, your digital postcard work? So that, again, depends on the chip out and the stock we're using. The heavier we go, try to keep it down a little slower. We get about two, 200,000, 220,000 in an eight-hour shift of postcards. It's all going to depend on the size of the postcard. A six by eleven, a six by nine. You know, that really kind of throws your output out a little bit. But probably around two hundred thousand a shift. Um, I wanted you to go into a little bit more detail, if you would, about about specialty folding. As Lance explained earlier, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of format size with your MBO line. Uh, um, what? Uh, what, what sort of specialty folding are you able to do now that perhaps you couldn't do uh, prior to uh, going with MBO? I mean, with MBO, we purchased the additional gatefold plates, so your 8.5 by 14 gatefold slit and nest packages, uh, anything your self-mailer gatefolds, uh, that can all be done there, the slit and nest, uh, your Z-folds, just your, you know, your your different packages. I don't want to say difficult, but different packages um, that some places might not be able to do. We have a couple different options now to be able to do that with MBO. 
And again, that was just talking through with uh, our sales rep, finding out the best solution for the packages we wanted to create. Um, there were a couple different options that MBO offered us, and we decided on which ones we thought were best for us. Yeah, I think so uh, also, uh, Ryan, if I could also mention um, what we see as a standard in this market right now has been an upgrade to a six plate folder that everybody is using. Uh, in the older days, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the chop lines, as a matter of fact, most all of them that I've seen uh, are probably four plate machines. And um, now everybody's, everybody's starting out with a six and that gives you additional folds, both up and down. So your accordions and, you know, roll folds and, and so on and so on are all, are all, expanded uh and that and then when you couple that with the additional cutoff you know the the, the sheeter can cut all if, if literally they could run um, you know almost signature work coming out uh by folding it up you know long sheets you you could cut a 40 inch sheet if you wanted to and fold it up you know into an accordion panel if you needed to for whatever reason uh and make a, a map type mail product which is kind of an interesting thing uh, we We're actually that. doing, um, within that application right now, we have a client that's doing a growth chart. Yeah, the growth mm -hmm. chart is uh, 52 inches long, and we're going to fold it down to 8.5 by 8.5 eight eighths, just in that one six-plate six plate, uh, folder. And that six-plate folder took us from having to have two older-style MBO tandem units to being able to make all the folds in one fold section instead of having to put two, you know, B23 or B20 folders right next to each other in line. We can do it all in one, and that, again, increased our output and our productivity. Uh, we're, we're getting uh, close to 3 o'clock here, but I do want to get in a couple of uh, other uh, questions here. Here are a couple about uh, the perf score unit uh, in the Intellis line and a related question about auxiliary stitching equipment. I may have missed this. I don't know whether Intellis is doing uh, stitching as part of uh, your configuration, but uh, what, what about that? Please talk a little bit more about your perf scoring and uh, any auxiliary stitching you may be doing or, or thinking about doing. So right now we have a dynamic perf unit built into um, the roll-to-roll -roll digital line so you can do your variable perfing and your variable scoring in line and then the MBO product that we've talked about goes between the unwinder and the sheeter and can do all that variable perfing and scoring also for your self mailers for your uh, scoring of your the thicker stocks that will come off of our pro stream to really give you that nice finish. And how and did you about, also about, say, Pat, about yeah, stitchers, ahead. too? Hmm. Did you ask about stitchers also? Yes, one question uh, came in. Uh, what auxiliary stitching equipment is used with the MBO digital line? We, we do not have a, a stitching line right now, but um, we, when we were going to go into this, we were going to utilize another one of the setups that you've seen here today uh, along with a Mueller Martini system which paired really well together, which allowed us to take, uh, you know, our offset uh, in certain pockets to also take our digital, uh, be able to do matching on pages, multi-variable depth to booklets, um, you know, and, and to be honest, MBO is the only person uh, or only system out there that could really feed uh, a Mueller Martini line in the way that it needs to to be able to work with a client like ourselves that wants to take that, again, that hybrid approach that's taking both digital and offset and putting it together into one book. Uh, MJ, yeah, I'm going thanks. to reserve the final question. Yeah, go ahead. No, that, uh, by the way, Pat, uh, if anybody does want any more on that, about a month ago, uh, NAPCO and MBO put on a webinar that went over digital a stitching application from Digital Lizard out in Las Vegas. Uh, okay. And that recording and everything is online and it, it went over that very topic if that's uh if that's of interest to anybody. 
Yeah, you can find that along with all of our other archived webinars uh, in the events channel of uh, the uh, Printing Impressions uh, webpage, which is, of course, piworld.com. Uh, this is bringing us right to the top of the hour, and it looks as though we're uh, just about out of uh, time for today. I want to uh, thank our great uh, speakers, and I also want to thank our audience. I really appreciate your engagement and those, uh, those great questions that you were sending in. Uh, please be sure to check out our webinar page at piworld.com to get information on all of our archived and upcoming webinars. And as you see here, uh, we do archive these programs, and this one should be available for your review in a couple of days. Finally, if you would just take a minute to fill out the brief feedback survey that will appear on your screen next, we would be very grateful. Uh, your feedback does help us improve the webinars we bring to you in the future. Again, thank you again for spending time with us this afternoon, and we do hope to see you again at upcoming Printing Impressions webinars.